I always believe in divine appointments in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So if this is your first time, I pray it will not be your last. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Matthew chapter number 25 is where we're going to be reading. I'm going to be starting my reading at verse number 14. I'm going to ask that once you get there, if you wouldn't mind standing for the reading of the word in the name of Jesus. It's new for you in 22 in the name of Jesus. Those of you who have been with us for a while, you know that ever since 2022 started, we've been standing for the reading of the word. God, is, God said, if you want something new, different, you want something different, do something different. I said, all right. So we're standing for the reading of the word, believing by faith that God's doing a new thing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, we're at verse number, we're going to start our reading at verse number 14. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And the word of the Lord God says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and dwelt and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But the one who had received one went and dug and hid in the ground at his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So that he who received five talents brought in five other talents, saying, Lord, you have delivered from me five talents, and I have gained five more talents besides them. And he said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers of his almighty word. And we said amen. 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 Fathers, I thank you for the word today. I'm asking Holy Spirit to move up and down, touch every individual, every man, woman, boy, and girl. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way to Have me. your way, Lord. And we said amen. Amen, Lord. Amen. amen. You may amen. be seated in his presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. I didn't want to go any further into much more reading, but in case you haven't realized, Matthew chapter number 25, verse 14 through 30 is going to be your homework. In the name of Jesus. My God, I got homework. Yes, you do. You're back. Your homework in the name of okay. Jesus. If you're taking any notes today, the title of today's message is Use It or Lose It. Uh -oh. Or you're like, oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Use It or Lose It. When you're writing it, that, that's the title of today's message. The word for today is talent. 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 In the name of Jesus. T A L E N T. Talent. Before we get into any further depth of the scripture, of course, I'm going to give you the definition of talent. And that's just the way the Lord God always gives me a word as well as a message. If you're looking at the definition of talent, it is a natural aptitude, a special athletic, creative, or artistic. And that's definition number one. I will repeat that. Talent. It is a natural Aptitude, special, athletic, creative, or artistic. And the second definition, natural endowment. That's someone who has a talent. So anyone who has a talent, the automatic, I know the Bible talks about it in the biblical way. It's also listed as money back in Roman times. It is listed as money. Talents was considered money. But this is a twofold message today, and I pray the Holy Spirit will allow me to address both issues. It's also considered money, but God's talking about your talent and your gifts. Many of you have spiritual gifts and you have talent. You're like, wait a minute. Yeah, everybody in here at the sound of my voice has a spiritual gift as well as a talent in the name of Jesus. That means something you don't have to work hard at. It's just in you. You know what I'm talking about? Everybody has something. Some of you may not know what it is, but I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will quicken in you for you to know that you have a talent. Amen? Amen. Let me give you a, a great definition, a good example of that. You see this keyboard that's right up here. Someone who has a talent, a natural ability, 
they can get on it and start playing a song just by sound. Amen? But then there is also someone who can get up there and they can play it, but they have to learn it. Amen? You know, they have to take on like a skill. Well, they have, and there's nothing wrong with having skills. Skills are something that we learn, but whenever you have a natural endowment, you don't need, you can read scales and bars, and you hear it, and then you can play it. So the Lord God is letting us know that just like that, that example with the keyboard, there's something that God has put inside of you that's already been there since you were born. The moment you got saved, the Lord God said, I'm starting, storing up your gifts. Because you have a gift and a talent that somebody is in need of. And that's why I love this passage right here. Because the Lord God is speaking to each one of us today. He's letting us know that you have a gift. You have a talent. And as he was speaking this parable to these precious individuals. That we can understand the disciples. So we can understand what God is talking about. Look at verse number 15. The word of the Lord God says. And he gave one five talents. One two and then another one he gave one. And I underline this. I pray you can mark in your Bibles that said, to his own ability. God will not give you something that he knows you cannot do. Oh, my Lord. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, God. You don't know what I'm going through. The Lord God says that whenever this individual was given an assignment, God is such a good God. I know you think you're going through a rough time, but the Lord God is saying, whatever God is allowing you to go through, he has gifted you, you will be able to make it. Wow. Tell your neighbor, you're going to make it. Wow. You're gonna make it. Tell your neighbor on the side, you're going to make it. You may not realize it, but the Holy Ghost is working inside of you. God will not give you something that you cannot handle. You may not have experienced it yet, but I want you to know that today, your gifts are being stirred up. Your talents are being stirred up in the name of you. You're going to come out of this giving God some glory. Yes, you Lord. Come out of this yes, Lord. Than what you went into. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God is letting you know that He gave gifts to their own ability. There are times that we wonder why would the Lord God allow us to go through some things. I know I'm not the only one. Sometimes you're like, Lord God, I'm going through some things right now that Lord, you probably don't even know about which no. does. But you know how we don't. Yes. We're telling the Lord God, Lord, do you know what's going on in my life? Do you realize the pressure I have? And the Lord God said, I know exactly what you're going through. And matter of fact, I didn't cause it, but I did allow it. Then I, I got a point that out because a lot of individuals, they, they're yeah. giving God a bad rap. Yeah. And yes. they're saying, you know what? God caused it. Come God, on. God didn't cause it, but he allowed it. Yes. We live in this world. We're not from this world. When we're living in this world, this world is falling. You know, they, they do have murders. They do have molestation. Talk to me now. They do have things that go on that we don't care for. That Why would God have this to be in this world? We fell into this world. Whenever the Lord got cast out Satan and his yes. authority angels, guess where they fell? Right here. That's right. So there was some demons here before you even got here. That's exactly. There's some spirits that have been attacking your family that's been here before you got here. Come on, Pastor. So why are you looking like, well, I don't know why is this going on in my house and my mm. family. Don't look at it strangely because you are living in this world. And the Lord God said, we were born into sin. Yes. We weren't sinful, but we were born into it. That's right. And because we're born into it, that's why you got to be born again. That's right. So that way you can get at least get on top of this sin thing. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. So as you're born into this world, the Lord God says that we should be saved, but I'm letting you know that God didn't cause the problem, but he did allow it. God did not cause COVID. I'm going to go on record. Come on. God did not Come cause on. COVID. Come on. Come on. Didn't cause it. Mm -mm. There are plagues in the Bible that God didn't cause COVID, but he did allow it. He did allow it. He did allow it. I'm telling you, during that time, I found that there were more people praying than there were ever praying before. That's exactly. I tell you what, there That's were more exactly. families coming together yes. than there were coming. I bet you did not, I bet you not alone. Yeah. There's probably yeah. some of us, we never met our neighbors in 20 some years. We got to know them, didn't we? Yeah. Uh -huh. well, yeah. we? We learned how to sit out on the porch like we used to. Yeah. <laughs> sit down and look around and look. And just see, you know, well, I ain't got no game to go to. My child ain't got no volleyball. No, 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 this and that. I ain't got no appointments to the doctor. I, everybody was sitting at home. And I'm saying that because we need to take comfort in that. Yeah. That God didn't cause it, but God allowed us to be able to tap into our family. He allowed us to get back to the basics. Yes. And I want you to know that wasn't such a bad thing because, you know, I believe that we needed that. 
People learn ways how to celebrate birthdays. When it first started out, nobody knew how to celebrate birthdays. All of a sudden, you had drive-bys. Mm. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are people putting things in the yard. You know, something just to say, oh, you're still there. And yes. you're, you're, matter of fact, you got to know your neighbors and you check on them. Like if you didn't see them come out, are they at the hospital, are they sick? You're, and I'm saying that so God utilized, he said he'll work all things out for the good. Yes. It wasn't something that was glorious, truly enough, and we lost a lot of great, great people. Yes. But the Lord God still protected and still loved us, and he allowed it. Still. I'm saying that because God wants you to know that you have some spiritual gifts that are inside of you. And God says, I know what you can handle. You may think that you can't handle what you're going through, but the Lord God said the best is yet to come, and you will make it out of this. The, these individuals, they were given talent. And I want you to know, God is a God. He loves to invest in us. God is a man of God. In case you're wondering, wondering what, you know, does God believe in investment? Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. You're like, wait a minute. So those of you who are in business and you're thinking, well, I don't know if I should invest. You need to. You're like, wait a minute. Should I invest? You need to. Why? Because the Lord God believes in investment. You're like, really? Yeah. Read the scripture well. The scripture says that the Lord God, okay, if you read all of you, do your homework and read all of Matthew 25, you'll see that the Lord God tells one of the servants, you should have invested to the bank. Yes. At least you would have got some interest. That's right. That means that you didn't give it to some stranger. It meant that you apparently put it in a facility where you can get more money out of it. Am I right about it? So if any of you are riding on the fence, should I invest? Please do so. Because the Lord God said, if you put something, start putting something away, God says you're going to get a bigger return. God's all about you getting more. Amen. He's a God of increase mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, somebody's about to increase even as we're speaking <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Increase yes. is all over you in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. You better reach up and grab that mentor yes. for increase yes. in the name of Jesus. Let that thing ring, ring, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Said, give you so much, you won't have enough room to receive it. It's so fresh 
on that couch. When they pray, that's the first thing to pop up. Because they said, I'm believing it. See, those who have the gift of faith, you can pray for family members to come on in. Amen. You don't have a problem. You're like, is that my, yes, it is your spiritual God. Mm. Because you'll call them out every time, just like it. And it don't even bother you. I call mm. them out. And you're like, they're coming in, so filled out. And filled up with Jesus Christ. Sold out for Jesus. Amen. Speaking in heavenly language and casting out devils. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, here. And they call it out like it's nothing. And you hear them in their prayer. You're like, really? Yes, yes. But that's a gift of faith because they refuse to. And see, a gift of faith also works with a gift of miracles. Yes. Mm. They normally run together in spiritual gift settings. Because if you're going to give them miracles, that means a person, but if you believe in miracles, a gift of miracles means that whenever you're praying, you believe that that body part going to come out. Already. Hey, hey, Lord hey. Jesus. Yes, Lord. You're like, I don't know. Mm. You're like, don't worry. I'm stirring it up. You're about to find out. I definitely have love to give mm. a spiritual gift test. See, some of you really need to understand where you are, what, what, what your faith yeah, level, yeah. what your gifts yeah. are, so God can utilize you. How can you actually, God says you, if you don't use it, you don't lose it. Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so I'm telling you that because some of you are like, well, I, I don't think that, you know, you know, I should do that. The Lord God said, if you don't start utilizing your spiritual gift, whenever you keep laying dormant, you don't lose it. Mm. You're like, wait a minute, mm. I thought that, that, let me tell you something. You gotta use your gift. God spoke to this day, spoke to the servants. Let's get to the text. God spoke to that servant, the one that had said five talents. Let me see if y'all look at your math pencils together. He went to the, the to that servant who had who had uh, sold five talents. And what did that servant say? He sold it and, and he sold and got five more. All right? And the one that got two got two more. But there was one who got one, and what did he do? He hid it in the ground. You know why God was upset with that servant? Because of fear. One thing God does not want, he said, if I'm going to administer, give you gifts, the last thing I need for you to do is operate in the spirit of fear. Mm. Why would God bless you with gifts? Then you're going to be fearful about it. He said, because, Lord, I knew that you were a hard man, that you reap what you did not sow. The Lord got chasing him. He said, well, should you not have sold it? Mm -hmm. Because if you knew that I went where I did not sow, then if you would have put it in the ground, I could have sold more. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm being rough on your name mm. because the Lord God is saying, don't try to hide your gift. You need to start investing in it. Yeah. So you need to start utilizing it because if you don't, you're going to lose it. Yeah. We, I said from that, for those who got five, gave five, but well, what that made them? Ten. There we go. Very good. Those who got two and got two more, what you got? Four. 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 Those who got, uh, who got the just one and they didn't sow it anywhere, what they got? One. 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 Okay, now which one look like they got some increase? The ten five and four, am I right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not, not saying God loves God of increase. Yes. God says, whatever you went in with, I want you to come out with more. Yes. Somebody yes. better get that in the name of Jesus. Yes. If God said you went into this thing with five, you should be coming out with five times more. Mm. If you went into this thing with two, you should be coming with double times more. He said, even if you went in with one, you should at least have sold one more to get double, get yes. two. Yes. Yes. So God is upset with that whenever he gives you something and you don't try to sow it. You don't try to utilize it. So you're going to lose. So that's why God chastened that servant. Mm. And the Lord God is saying, people of God, don't, don't get chastened with your gift. God says, whatever your talent is, whatever your gift is, then you need to be working it for the kingdom of God. Mm. Yes. You're like, oh yeah, you need to be working it. You're like, no, that, that's your investment. Your investment is investing in the, in the kingdom of God. You're like, well, how do I do that? If you're a prayer warrior, then you know what? You should be praying. If one of your spiritual gifts is, is healing, then you should be laying hands upon the sick. Mm. You're like, oh, wait a minute. How do I know if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. But see, how will you know? You're like, well, have you ever, you ever had a prayer and you just had a dream and you're praying with somebody and you just feel compelled to just, if I can just lay hands on them. That's indication number one. Yeah. And then especially if your mind is saying you have lost your mind, then you know it's the whole thing going to do. Because you know, you're like, they're going to look at me like I'm crazy. I'm going to go up there and tell them, let me lay hands on them. They're already acting funny. <laughs> Trust me. I'm saying that because that was my first experience whenever I actually laid hands upon someone. I was like, Lord, I ain't going over there. You know, I know I'm not the only one that had those internal arguments when the Holy Ghost started talking to you and you're talking back, but nobody's talking. <laughs> and you're like, he said, he said, go. You're like, I ain't going. <laughs> you're looking around and everybody, you see all these people? I'm not going. I'm not even budging. Hands started vibrating, burn, burn, fire red. Yeah. I was like, I'm not the one. I said, go put that on somebody. I said, oh no. 
we're in a big car, you know, then of course you wouldn't do it, I'm in a big setting, you know, I got a big conference, I don't know nobody, I'm on a bus, <laughs> well I can't sneak out, you know, I'm on a bus ride, we're gonna ride with the people, you know, <laughs> and the Lord kind of said, go let, I said, no, then he gonna lead me to a judge, I said, oh my God, <laughs> I can't do it to her, Dude, I know who she is in other realms, and then I'm gonna go lay hands upon her, I said, oh, you know, she's sick, I'm arguing with her, <laughs> And I had my hands do, 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 all over. And the Lord God said, just go lay hand. And I didn't know about gifts. I'm trying to give you that to kind of let you know your gifts and your time. Sometimes you're not aware of it. But if you're in the right setting and you keep hanging around the Holy Ghost, He's going to reveal it to you. He's going to let you know. You will get all these indicators. You're like, what's going on? You get word of knowledge. You're like, it's in the left ear. You're like, we don't get it. You're like, but then you'll get the word of knowledge. Word of wisdom, she's been having it for five years. Yo, it'll happen mm. just like that in the following room tonight. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, <laughs> hallelujah. And surely enough, as the Lord God directed me to do, and I went and I, I did it. I did it reluctantly. I thought I was going to slap her. I was so, you know what I'm saying? You know when you don't know what to do. And I just, I just you know, I literally just, I just got hit her on top of the head. And when she went out, I said, Lord, have mercy. I'm not knowing, you know, but I'm telling a baby and cry, and I'm not saying that for, I didn't know what to do, you know, and I, I, I was able to minister that because I started out not knowing what to do. I knew that I wanted to do something for God, and I knew that he called me to do something, but what it was, I had no idea. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. If you don't know, you can lift your hands or just keep looking straight forward. But at the time, I didn't know what God wanted to do. But I knew there was something more than just me coming to church. Mm -hmm. I knew there was something more than me just sitting here. I knew it was something more. I was like, God, there's got to be more to this Christianity than this. Got to be. That's delivered. I knew it. I'm not going to just sit here and go through the motion day in and day out. Sing a few songs, three, three praise, two worship. Sit home, go home, go back. Go, no, there's got to be more to this about. Who are these people yeah. running up and down for? I want to know what that is. What is that, that Holy Ghost? What is that? <laughs> I start tapping into that, and all of a sudden I got yeah. Woo! And when you get it, you're going to know you got it. Yes. I'm going to tell you, nobody can. You'll be shouting in the middle of a grocery line, Tomato, the blood of Jesus. you just be excited because anytime you get it, you're like, do you realize? You're like, do you see the blood? You walk in the aisle, you see nothing but tomato. Look at the blood of Jesus. Okay. <laughs> uh, see, devil don't mess yes. with me today at the castle. Yes. Yes. I got the blood. I got all my tomatoes. Don't complain. You take everything literally as far as oh the, the spirit of the living God moving and ministering and going. And I mean, whenever you get it, you get excited about the Holy Ghost. No matter where you go, things start right. Rain, rain, God. <laughs> You're like, well, why are you excited? He said, don't you tired of the rain? Whenever it's raining outside, the Bible says, ask for rain in a time of So when it starts raining, rain money in my house. Rain blessing in my house. Come on, rain come on, come on. Rain peace, rain. So when it's raining, rain, 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 rain. Rain, saturate the ground mm -hmm. of my heart. Yeah. Saturate my home. Yeah. Saturate my heart. Lord God, do a clean sweep. Because yeah, yeah, I tell yeah. you what, the dust buster right. can't get it like you can. Oh. Oh. But the rain of God, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, lost yeah. some demons out. You know, I tell you, I just open up the door. Oh. Yeah. Fresh rain, yeah. come on in. It's raining on our side. They look at rain from the roof all the way from yeah. the ceiling down to the foundation. So Every cool. demon that's wow. not like you got to go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, you talk about a fresh run. So whenever you get it, you take things like that and you just go all the way with it. Yeah. And I'm saying that because whenever God will start stirring up your gifts and then you realize it, God will have you to utilize it at just different times and just be obedient. But you must know that God wants you to increase people of God. I know that you're, you may have been expecting a shout message, but the Holy Spirit said, I need to teach you today. I need to teach you to understand what you need to do and where your place is in the kingdom. You need to utilize your gift or you will lose your gift. You need to be effective in ministry. You know what God says? I didn't just call you here just to take up space. He said, if I'm allowed you to be born and I have you, you're like, well, somebody else can do that in my family. He said, well, why do you think I called you? You're like, wait a minute, me, why not? Nobody else going to do it. Amen. Amen to that. <laughs> Who else gonna do it? Who's gonna carry the mantle? You're like me, Lord. 
Jesus. Yes, you. Yes. Amen. I'm going to tell why not you. Yes. The Lord God said, you said, well, I believe in God to save. But I didn't think you were going to call me to save. And he said, you know what? People believe whenever God says, go save the nation. They're thinking third world country. Sometimes your nation is your own house. Yes. Yes. And you got to start in your front door yes. before you can go to the back door. Yes. Yes. You know, I want to travel overseas. Can you save the neighborhood first? Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Can you save just your first cousins? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nation right now. Yeah. Because they're connected to something. Yeah. So you're talking about when God called, whenever he called you to get saved and start doing the work in you, God says go save the nation. He's telling you get beyond yourself and go do something for God. Utilize your gifts. And so when I began to utilize my gift, when you will utilize your gift, they'll become more in activation. They'll tell the servant that actually did something with the gift. The Lord God said, and it sounds like it's a like a punishment word, but the Lord God says, take from the one that had just that only got one and give it to the one that had ten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, boy, that's something right there. That's a daddy teacher right there. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, wait a minute. You're like, well, how would you get he already got ten? He said, because I'm teaching him that you should have sold something. You're going to lose something. He said, and because my word is true, he mm. said, any time that you do something for me, you're going to get increased. He said, you thought you had five. He'll take this other one, too. So mm. that means he has 11. All right? <laughs> 11 times more. And you're thinking, well, God, why is God so hard? God's trying to teach us a lesson that he's a God of increase. Anytime you want to keep God balanced and equal, whenever God says, I'm trying to give you more, and you're up there hiding, you're operating in fear, not letting God utilize your gift, the Lord God says, I'm trying to get some of you to get out of your comfort zone. See, you're in, you're, you're too comfortable right there. Oh, Lord, I'm not going to do that. Mm. They're going to call me a fanatic. Mm. But why not? Aren't you tired of being called normal? <laughs> I mean, just every once in a while, I like to just break the break the shell of being normal. You know, our you know, children of God, we should be radical for Christ. When people see you coming, they should go, "Oh no, uh -huh. Woo, oh no, they're gonna break something up." Woo. Watch them, watch them. That's how the enemy should feel when you get on the property. When they see you coming, they should. You see, whenever you come in, see, that's how the believers should be. And your gifts, your talents will illuminate before you. Yes, it will. They will God says, I want you to have increase. Tell your neighbor, increase. increase. Tell your neighbor, that's an increase. increase. You must understand, when God gave you those gifts, he entrusted you with them. When God gives you something and he feels like you're qualified enough to handle it. See, many of you will maybe have thought under yourself and maybe thought, the Lord God, I really am not capable. The Lord God said, I, didn't make, I make no mistakes. God has never made a mistake. I want to go on record. He's never made a mistake. I'm going to say it again. God never makes a mistake. So if God has gifted you in those particular areas, God said, I knew exactly what I was doing. I know what's needed in this family. I know what's needed in your life. I know what's needed in your community. And he said, I sent someone like you to reach that generation. I said someone like you, the small inside. I've been told so many times, you're so tiny. You know, meaning short. I said, but I'm big and G, you better yes, watch it. Yes, Lord. Watch it. Take these three inch brothers off. Uh, keep that devil uh, all up and down the street. Yes, yes Lord God. I'm going to tell you, it's like, when you, my husband calls me, he said, you're the little dog with the big bite, with the, with the big boy. And I said, ooh. Uh,